first hand raised is Mubin. Mubin? Hi there, good afternoon. Uh, Sia, good afternoon, Rashi. Hope you guys are well. Um, just a question for Rashi. Um, Rashi, we've seen the late change of um, uh, Jasper Wieser obviously uh, pulling out and Kwaka going to eight. Do you not feel that this was an opportunity perhaps to give Ivan Roos maybe a chance at eight? Seeing as he's, the, he's an out and out eight way and Kwaka is more of a, a flanker than an eight man. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think it's a matter of opinion, you know, for us. Uh, Kwaka is, uh, is also out okay. at eight. He played really well at eight and has done well for us at eight. And I think throughout his career, you know, and when we train, he is definitely our second choice eight. Uh, uh, um, when it comes uh, after Jasper and when Dwayne was involved, you know, it was touch and go and uh, Kwaka just covered a lot of positions. So this is a late change. We actually hoped that Jasper would pass the uh, criteria and all the uh, concussion HIA, um, you know, sets of rules that which they are. I think we, we probably one of the first countries that, um, you know, was informed that by World Rugby with the new protocol that is uh, category one and we were hoping he was going to pass. It looked really good. So with the change so late, a guy like Dion just makes more sense to us. Uh, and who knows the French culture and the way they play and has played a lot against them. Uh, yeah, so Ivan has been with us for a while now. He deserves a chance somewhere. Um, but I don't think we must forget how well Dion fully played uh, also. Um, and also has only had two test caps or so. And it was also a realistic option to take to the World Cup next year in both positions. But yes, uh, we did consider uh, we that. lost you there for a while. Yes, I can hear you now. Now you're back with us. Please carry on. I lost that. You could start from the top. You could start just to remind us what are you seeing. I mean, in terms of, you said it is true it's that true. Uh, the, the, the prevalence, the prevalence mm -hmm. is very high. Hi guys, uh, ENCA, please put off your microphone. Thank you. Uh, Percy? Yeah, I can no, no. Percy? I think it's almost a minute. Uh, Ashfaq? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well there in uh, Marseille or Toulon. I don't know where you are at the moment. But yeah, just um, uh, see, uh, firstly, uh, you know, after what happened last week, uh, I'm sure you guys uh, would have felt that, that you could have won the game and you had opportunities. And now you're playing the French in their own backyard ahead of them hosting the World Cup next year. How important is getting a victory uh, as opposed to, to improving the performance or does it go hand in hand? Yeah, I think it goes um, hand in hand, and obviously, for us, we we just wanna make sure that you know we we play like we we plan to play in the week. And I think the biggest thing was um, you know we keep on going to that we're creating all of these opportunities. But um, yeah, this weekend we've got a very good plan, and we wanna. I mean, it's a big it's a big game. We always wanna win in a Springbok jersey. And for moment and going forward, you know, it's also going to make a difference for the team. We're trying to build for the next, well, from last week already, it didn't go our, our way. Um, but it's going to be important, you know, to play them here. It's going to be the same atmosphere um, next next year. Um, um, so, yeah, it will be good to test all of us as a group. And if we are able to take the kind of pressure that we're going to feel on Saturday. Uh, Rashi, just, just on that as well, in terms of finishing opportunities, uh, it was an issue in that last championship game. Uh, I know you guys were chasing the game with a bonus point, but last week as well, it's like you get to the 22, you get in the red zone, and then just there's a knock-on, a wrong pass, or decision-making. What do you think can be done to sort of change it and get those tries um, that you actually deserve uh, based on, on how the other guys are playing? Yeah, um, <laughs> as it man, it's good to talk to you also. Yeah, I think the first thing, it's definitely not nerves or pressure that we put on the guys. 
I think, you know, uh, the skill sets we get from where they play all over the world and uh, even going to the kicking game, you know, uh, I hear a lot of people saying, get a kicking coach, get a kicking coach, but you get a guy in with us. Uh, sorry, I'm answering another question, but I want to tie it into that one. We get a guy with us. Um, we lucky 10 games sometimes, uh, the guy played most of the games. And then the other 42 weeks of the year is with his provincial or his franchise kicking coach. So to uh, try and change the guy's kicking style uh, when he's with us doesn't really make a lot of sense. Obviously, we do also work on a lot of fundamentals, uh, which include exactly what you're saying there to finish opportunities. Uh, I guess that's a negative that we, we didn't. You're 100% right. I guess the positive is with all the things that, that went wrong and having three fly-offs being injured and Damien having some responsibility and uh, going through those pressure situations um, and the same with Cheslin and so on. Um, and this, this weekend with Marnie, uh, uh, with kicking and with finishing opportunities, the only way you, you get it right at this level, as you saw last night with the SA team, the moment you, you put on that jersey, there's extra pressure, there's new expectations, and the guys only learn through experience. The nice thing is, we we know we're going through things now the same that we did in 2018. Only difference is we're four in the world, three in the world. We've got probably more World Cup league points. And we probably know that, you know, that Irish team who was number one is in our pool and, and there was a chance that we could have beaten them. So we work on all those things. Uh, uh, but the nice thing before a World Cup, we almost have like a pre-season to work really hard on fundamentals. At this stage, you trust that you get a certain skill set and we as coaches must give them confidence in the plan and help them to finish those opportunities which we did create. So confidence and repetition, uh, I guess that's uh, the only way. Thanks, Zina. Um, good afternoon, guys. Hope you're both well. Um, just a question for Rassi, please. Um, Rassi, how important is it going to be that you guys handle the France kicking game um, on Saturday? Obviously, they've improved quite a lot in that aspect under Flux Lears. Um, I think they kicked the most in the Six Nations as well, or they were up there. Um, just how important is that aspect going to be on Saturday? Yeah, they kicked the most and they won the Six Nations. You, you spot on with that stat. They definitely kicked the most and they won the Six Nations. Uh, so on that is, uh, I think Flock is just a kicking technique coach. I'm not sure if he's doing the kicking game actually or if it's Sean Edwards. Uh, I think it's Sean, but Flock is an excellent kicking coach. You know, um, I do think he works with the franchises. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think he'll change the guy's technique within a French setup, you know, uh, but certainly makes them do repetitions like Juan Dile is doing with our guys here and the same with Felix in certain areas. So, no, handling 33 kicks, which they kick, um, and being number two in the world and winning the, uh, the Six Nations, they certainly have a really, really good kicking game. Uh, um, and yes, yeah, probably we will have to handle that, but we've got our our plans, but it's always difficult to to play against a team who's got a really good kicking game, as you can see with their results, where they're currently in the world. Thanks, Ina. How's it, guys? <clears throat> Sia, um, do you think that uh, with the SAA loss this, uh, last night, coupled with your guys' loss against Ireland, do you think that adds a bit of extra pressure to you guys to, you know, uh, get the win this weekend? And then also, you know, with... Uh, France, you know, pulling out all the stops at the moment in the build-up to the World Cup, you know, they're making it a big spectacle at the stadium and, uh, you know, it's going to be quite a cauldron tomorrow night with all the fans there and everything. Do you think it's a good experience for you guys in the build-up to the World Cup to get an experience of how it's probably going to be like next year and also when you might uh, face them in the pool, uh, not the pool stages, the knockouts? Yeah, uh, yeah, the second one, I think, yeah, it is good. Um, it will be good for all of us. I mean, especially for guys who've never played in a World Cup to see what it will, it will be like, you know, to get that kind of experience. And I think, latching on what Coach Rice says, we're all getting these experiences now, um, especially for guys who haven't had it before. It will be really good for them to see what it will be like um, next year. And and the type of how big the game is, you know, it's number number four and number number two. Uh, in the world, it's there, there's nothing better for some of the guys. Some of the guys will never get to experience anything like this. And I mean, us losing, we we always want to win every weekend. It's always a pressure situation every weekend. It's never just because we lost. Now every game we want to win. We every game we want to play well. We want to make the people proud back at home. Um, and because people 
we've done so well in the past that people expect us to do well. So, and we want to do well as well. And so it's never because just because the SAA lost or we lost last week. Of course, there's more pressure, but it's always pressure for us all the time. But we, that's why we do what we do. And our preparation uh, gives us the comfort and clarity that we can do it. Percy, Mr. P. Zinex, bye, thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Rassi, jij moet om die vraag weer te herhalen. Niet een Afrikaans of een Hasbi Frassi. Hoe kom het jullie ter elder eer besluit en om hierdie, om hierdie um, verandering te maken? Meneer? Het jullie als eerste rugby niet, dit, of liefst die spermboek het niet voorzien dat jullie speler voor tien dagen op je kantlijn moest wezen? Uh, nee, ons het niet voorzien. Nie. Um, uh, ons, uh, natuurlijk het ons allemaal met die, met die concussie of uit zijn eigen protocol um, is het de eerste keer dat ons onder die ons het allemaal het getekend, allemaal het, het verstaan, maar uh, you know, volgens um, ons het ons gedink uh, Jasper de baie realistische kans en dat was baie medische kennis en onderzoek en gewin en, en tot en met gister het ons nog gedink Jasper het moet een goede kans, want uh, Het, of sonder mag ek nie baie, mag nie oor detail praat, oor speler so besering snek nie, die, die recht om het te doen, ek soek jy meer is die dokterie, maar jy weet op die oomlik, um, ek denk dit is een van die min kere wat ek, seker die eerste keer wat, wat, wat World Rugby, ek denk en wat, wat ons allemaal aanvaar, wat hulle intree en, en, en bevestig dat hulle dit as kategorie 1 kon kussie sien, en um, ja, so, jy weet, um, dit nog nooit voorin gebeur, en ek, ek, ek dink met die nieuwe protocolle sal het al meer gebeur, so, uh, ons het die hele tijd gewoon, er, gaan hy recht wees, gaan hy nie recht wees, nie, en, en um, het eindelijk aan, dan hoor mens aan vare mens dat, so, ja, uh, dit is nie ter elfde uur, en ons het ter erg gehoop, um, dat hy dit nog gaan, gaan, gaan pas. Jan? Thank you, Zina. Thank you. Thank you, Rassi. Thank you, Sia. Um, uh, Rassi, uh, Sia can also answer this. Um, we, we, we hear a lot about uh, the learnings and the lessons and stuff. Um, and we saw what happened in 2018. I mean, the guys also came out of a, a, a poor 2016, 2017, and then 2018 year into a, and then 2019 picked up. Do we place too much emphasis? Now, I know we always play, and Sia just said, we always play to win and we never play to lose. But do we place too much emphasis on these year-end tours, or should it be rather seen as a, as a learning curve and, and a building curve for for a year uh, ahead of a World Cup? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's a good question. I think you know, when you compare where teams are in their seasons, it's always a, a sometimes a benefit for us to have incoming tours where we are match fit and ready and everything ready to go. And then rugby championships is at a different time. But the year into a, you know, for example, we, you know, we plan our detail and our guys get back into the team. It can be injury. It can be resting them for a certain period. Uh, and then just something small can happen. with nobody's fault where I think it was Arthur and Cardiff. I can't remember the other team. Uh, Edinburgh, who, who withdrew uh, the week before we went into camp. So, you know, we lost the 18 minutes into Eben there. We lost the 18 minutes into Sia in that specific game. A few, a couple of guys. So, but then it, 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 it makes you, normally in my experience, your, your first game at tour a little bit. Uh, not 100% sure how the guys will all click because they haven't really played the previous weekend and, and we thought they would play. But, um, no, look, Ireland really peak at the right times, you know, they, they peak, uh, I think in 2018, they were actually also ranked number two, uh, and we were really nervous going into that World Cup, and then they had a tough pool to get out to, uh, we might have played them in the quarterfinals, uh, you know, so um, we fully understand that anything can happen the year uh, just before World Cup, but we just don't know that the things that we're trying to do on and off the field, uh, um, certainly has the relevance in the next year, but um, it's not the determining factor. It has relevance, but it's not the determining factor of how things will pan, excuse me, pan out in the World Cup year itself. Uh, last question um, online is Ashwak. Thanks, Zina. Uh, just one for Sia and a quick one for Rassi. Sia, uh, last week you said that the breakdowns are going to be the, the key battle that can determine the result against Ireland. France probably play a different style. Uh, what would you say this week is the main area for you guys to win? And then for us, just in terms of the goal kicking, I know Chisholm's going to be responsible this week. Last week we saw Damien was taken 
away from the kicking after he missed one and he, and he kicked one over. Just a thinking with the Chesden going with Chesden this week instead of Damien? Um, this weekend, uh, probably think for sure physicality. Uh, yeah, and then on the goal kicking, um, I, I think it was kind of, to, just to explain it, um, and I, I'll just come across the right way. Uh, the, there's some guys, I don't know if you've ever seen, but that at sometimes when Mornay Stein plays, you know, uh, Smith is kicking for goals. Uh, I've seen many times that when Alton Yankees was playing, you know, what's this fly of name, he, he kicked for Paul. So, Sometimes there's small little things. It can be, it can be uh, a dip. It can be kicking style. It's certainly not that we go in the game and say, hey, "You're kicking bad. We're taking you off." The other guy's kicking. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a considered measured thing where uh, the guys agree. And and normally when we the changes happens on that field, mm-hmm. it's not us as the coaches who decide who kicks now, who doesn't kick. We don't decide who they kick to the touchline, we don't, don't they kick to the touchline with a penalty. So it's actually confidence, rhythm, it might be a small little needle sometimes, you know, so definitely we don't tell a guy, you're, st- you're kicking bad, you're not the kicker today, you know. So it's more of a, as adults working together and deciding what is the best. And um, hopefully on Monday when Cheslin slots, I would say five out of five, we all will be happy and say, yes, it was a good decision. Thank you, guys. Uh, we take now questions from the floor. Um, and then, yeah, we'll keep the recording on and we'll send the recording shortly after. Um, any questions for Sam? Yeah, you, you mentioned the, the physicality. You were taking from the French forwards. I remember the game four years ago. It was already uh, very, very physical. Um, even though the whole pack has changed uh, in the French team, uh, what makes them so special and, and able maybe to match your own physicality that's most of the time above your position team? Um, I would, yeah. It's physically from both teams, not just from them, because we also want to bring physicality. Um, well, I mean, I think they they know what they're good at. What they're good at is a team, and I think they do that very well. And and Coach Rossi always tells us it's... it's uh, Test matches between our plan and their plan, their systems and all of that, and they know they plan very well, and they don't go away from it, and they are able to impose on other teams very well, and that's what obviously we had to study as a team. So we're gonna try, and and meet them in that. But we um, a, a generally physical team as well, so it's gonna be a good test tomorrow. Obviously, with our tactics and their tactics, but I think the mauling and the scrumming is direct. It's gonna be. Um, yeah, all about all about who wants it the most tomorrow, and obviously the technical things. I see. I know you want to win all your tests, but will it be a successful tour to box compete the Six Nation Champs? Uh... Yeah, uh, the first thing is we know the supporters, and I don't want to want to say it at all that the uh, supporters and you as a media, we 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 had to stack stronger together theme always. You know, we we never go away from winning. So we, we, we always try to, when we do experiment and test teams, teams with game plans or combinations in the team or kickers or uh, I think in a way, if you look at our system currently where we are, uh, when we next year get to a position where there's three fives out, we would have been in this position and tested this in a very tense environment in the end of year to away from home against the team number one in the world two in the world, play Italy is beaten well. So a lot of the things that looks bad now is just uh, uh, people don't want to hear that you learn from that, but you, you, you get answers from that. And and I, I you know, uh, some things you see works fantastically and some things you just see as a total flop. Uh, and you don't want that come September next year in the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, um, never go out to lose, always go out to win. But um, sometimes you see that works or that doesn't work, and sometimes that's really valuable from World Cup next year. Yeah, it's a special occasion for Wayne Barnes in thinking of it. Uh, yeah, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he doesn't know. But yeah, obviously we have a, a present for him because uh, um, yeah, there's not a lot of guys that can say they have, have that achievement. So yeah, they will be. 
just to elaborate further on the see um how many of us i know that able to come with questions um how many of your questions have been answered so far by the time i mean you faced i then you got first weekend and those probably again the teams that will probably determine where how far you will campaign those next year so with any questions that you may have had how many have been answered so yeah, I think you was looking at it this way, uh, uh, not to be clever or anything, just to try and explain it. So uh, you don't always get the answer, but you get what you know definitely does not work sometimes. And that sometimes is, is, is more helpful than, than getting the solution that you actually know, OK, we must try the next thing or the next plan. So sometimes you just see this specific way we did something or select a team or approach the breakdown or do that something in a scrum or stop them all. You actually just see this is not the thing that we should do. Uh, and then it means try another thing, try something new. So I can't tell you percentage wise. Some some things work brilliantly. I mean, again, I think it was a game of small margins against the world's number one team. And, you know, we are much better place when we were in 2018. But being the world champions, you know, we expected to beat teams like Ireland away from home and the margin shouldn't be three points for them. People expect it to be three points for us. That we accept. Uh, but yeah, so I can't give you a percentage, but I know that doesn't do it. Uh, one question for you. Um, when Fabian Gatti took over for the French team, he decided not, not to pick any player older than 30. Mm. Um, there was just one exception, I think, uh, Bernard Leroux. Uh, as yourself, for a long time, you pick even new players way above their mm. 30, like Scott Breeze, Einstein, mm. and now Dern. Mm. What's your own philosophy about this? And, and what about Dern? Why? What was interesting about him for you? Uh, Dern? Yeah. Uh, Dern for me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Fabian, when he, I think he was coaching to Lon, uh, when I was going Munster, he was he came over to to visit us and we shadowed each other for a week uh, um, in, in in Limerick and so going pretty well. We we sat in all our meetings, we discussed game plans and stuff. So I know he's a he's a he's a left field thinker. You know he, he thinks of other plans and that's a great example of him deciding not to pick guys over the thirty. Um, we don't necessarily go and, and say that, you know, we go and say, are we okay in this position? You know, is there a proper first choice with a second choice who's also senior, who's pushing really hard in that position? And then hopefully there's a youngster who's experienced enough that comes through. So, um, and then in certain positions we feel in a World Cup of only 33 men, we sometimes just need somebody there who supports experience-wise, help creating the culture, and that's where I think a guy like Dion comes in. You know, I'm not saying he's definitely going to the World Cup. There might be an injury, and other who might pass him. But he certainly fits that kind of, I'm fit, I'm still strong, I know all leagues, I know France well, the French well, uh, the country well, I know the league well, you know, um, and I can play two positions, uh, and he's always fit, you know. Um, so, but still, you know, we, we, we haven't pick the World Cup squad here yet, but that is something that we will look at. Actually, what's your take on the French team winning 11 tests in a row? Are they a more balanced side? Uh, are they still playing with all that flair? Are they kicking more, um, doing the driving more? more? What, why are they winning all the time? Why are they doing well? Um, you know, I, I heard Jake White saying oh, how much Jack was under pressure when he lost um, Two test matches and then Jock won the last three test matches, you know, um, Australia and then Argentina, Argentina. Uh, and I still think we were in with a chance when uh, Nassi Renault gave that time wasting card, you know. Then then we almost with not having to chase the rugby championship, but just win the last game. Uh, and that's the small margins, uh, you know, I think there's small margins in the game. Sometimes it's a knock on here, sometimes the forward part there, which a, a, a player give, sometimes it's a turnover line out. And I remember playing the French here a minute 81 last time. We were behind and we won in a minute 84. I remember the French playing Wales earlier this year where the Wales were in that game right up until the end and then the Wales lost to Italy. So I just think they, they are a team that believe a lot. Obviously, they kick a lot. We all know they're the team that kicks the most in the world. Uh, 
style of tier one nations. There's no doubt about that. I mean, everybody who analyzed the game can go and see they kick the most. But that's not where it stops. You know, it's uh, they believe in what they're doing. They've got a, a great coach. Their players are young. They're not a team who goes through ups and downs emotionally. You can see they steady when it goes well and when it goes bad. Uh, uh, they're a well-balanced team with young guys who's leading their team. Uh, I think that makes them dangerous. What do you think about the, the equipment in Toulon, like uh, Samayola or? Oh, it's it's been amazing. Like being here, yeah, it's been great. We've really enjoyed it as a, as a team. I think the hotel staff has really been amazing towards it, and obviously the people of the community have really been welcoming. And obviously the facilities are amazing. It started to go on, and um, yeah, we're grateful and we say thank you so much to people to to welcome us here with with open arms and. And yeah, hopefully, yeah, like it won't be the first time. Hopefully, if we, if we as the players make the World Cup team, at least we've been here before. We've seen how it is and how the facilities are and how amazing the people are in the community. Yeah, uh, Cheslin is your friend for a long time in our time as well. And um, what makes you think he could be successful tomorrow with the uh, goal kicking duty? Um, yeah. <laughs> Because he's worked hard on it, and uh, I mean, we—he's got our backing, regardless what happens. You know, we know he's going out there to give his ultimate best. And the the best thing for us as a team, we don't want to leave the results up to him. We wanna play well enough, you know, so that we that doesn't become an issue. But like Coach said, there next year, this time we wanna. He would have had so many people who are able to kick for poles, and we've been the situation before so he's playing there with no pressure on, on his shoulders at all from us as a team if he misses they can do something else great someone else so there's always opportunities for him to do all well, that's not going to be the the first and the last thing that we he's been looked at for us as a team we just want him to play well do like what he always does and like coach said um there's no pressure on anyone to do anything so yeah he, he'll be fine regardless what happens about five more minutes though it was a chance for you to come here one year before the World Cup, get your your bearing in the Yes, yes. You know, after that? Yes. 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 South Africans, thank you. Get your bearings. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, well, Africans are South African. Yeah. Thank you. I'll take it. I'm from the Spanish. There's a lot of mechanical. <laughs> uh, now, to get our bearings. Now, for us, it's uh, when even in the Jap uh, when we played in Japan, you know, we went over the previous year, December, and, and went to get used to how things get done and do have respect for the culture and how things work there. I think when people come to South Africa, it will be good if they understand our cultures and how we do things. You know, when we go to New Zealand, we make sure that we, we try and understand their cultures there. Uh, the same with the French. You know, we've got a lot of players that play here. Not a lot, but there's, there's quite a few who can speak French, who understand it, who's at the club here and our base is here. Uh, we just feel when you go to a country who owes something or even just in the rugby champions or anything, from right through from the crowds to the referees to the players, you know, you must, uh, you know, get to some effort to understand what's going on there. And then you'll be received better. You'll be more comfortable when you're training and when you're playing. And, and we can just give compliments uh, uh, how things are working here from the airport where we check through right through to the hotel to the training session. First time we've gone to a training session by boat. <laughs> uh, uh, which is unbelievable, and yeah. we all enjoy it. But tomorrow we know it will. We'll have to find out bearing there as well. Yeah, when you look at France, players of what there were over three three players from that team, and uh, the question was made about um, the fact that uh, Fabien Gaultier doubt hasn't picked up. But how have they changed? Really? The game plan has definitely changed. Um, I think they make, obviously, they kick a whole lot more and they play in the right. If you look at their team, they don't play in their half at all. They save the energy to play in your half. So I think that's been working very well for them. And yeah, they've got a strong forward pack who can more, who can scrum, and they've got guys who can, yeah, who can kick for post. I think they're fullback that's injured now. They, they, they they do those, you know, they have all those, everything that you, you want in a team. But obviously, 
we I think we've evolved too. Now, a lot of people might not see it, but we as a group can see it. And yeah, we, we're just looking forward to tomorrow to test ourselves against the number two team in the world. Uh, it's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be a proper game. And yeah, I know it's going to be a great atmosphere, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Thank you, guys. That's it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, guys, we'll be sending the recording shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.